How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another interview question on leak code. Today the question we're going to go over is called defanging an IP address and this is the question that's currently being asked by Apple right now. Alright guys, so today our problem is called defanging an IP address. This is going to be short, sweet, and our favorite. Easy. Uh, so this question is pretty simple I think. It's actually being asked by Apple right now. And our problem description says, given a valid IPv4 IP address, return a defanged version of that IP address. And it says, says that a defanged IP address replaces every period with open bracket period, closing bracket. So all we're really doing is taking the period and just enclosing it in brackets or square brackets. And so for example, one, if our address was 1.1.1.1, we would basically output one open bracket, period, closing bracket, one, open bracket, period, closing bracket, so on and so forth. Effectively just replacing all the periods or enclosing all the periods with uh, curly brackets or square brackets. So for example, two, if we had the IP address 255.100.50.0, we're gonna do the exact same thing, right? We're just gonna take every single period in that IP address and we're gonna enclose all those periods with square brackets, or we're gonna replace every single period with open square bracket, period closing square bracket. So because of that, we would get this output that we see here. And then we're told as constraints here at the bottom, the given address is a valid IPv4 address. So this problem is actually extremely simple. I'm kind of surprised it's asked at a company like Apple, to be honest, but it's not that bad, right? So all we really have to do, what we just said, is we need to iterate through our IP address and every single time we see a period, we just need to make sure that we replace it with that string of characters that they asked for, right? Open square bracket, period, closing square bracket. So that's really as simple as just iterating through our IP address, building up a new one every single time that we see a period, right? So if we see a period, we could just insert those string of characters that they wanted. And if it's not a period, we can simply add whatever's in that IP address because we know it's just gonna be a digit. So let's start doing that, right? So the first thing we're gonna want is something like a string builder, just because in Java, strings are really expensive to build. So using a string builder will definitely help our runtime. So I'm gonna say string builder result equals new string builder. And now we just want to iterate through our string or our IP address, right? So I'll say for int i equals zero, while i is less than address.length, i plus plus. And now what I'm going to do is just simply get the character that we're on. So I'm going to say character current equals address dot care at i. And now we're going to check, right? We have those two different cases. One case is the thing that we're on or the current character is a period. And the other case is that the current character is a digit. So if the current character is a period, we just need to make sure that we append to our result that sequence of characters, right? Open square bracket, period, closing square bracket. And otherwise, if it's not a period, all we have to do is actually append the digit that we're currently on in the IP address. So let's have those two conditionals now. So we'll say if current is a period, then we just want to append to our string builder, right? So we'll say result.append. And we just want to append that sequence of characters that they're asking for, right? We're just enclosing the period inside of square brackets. And then otherwise, if we're not on a period, we want to make sure that we maintain all the digits in the IPv4 address. So we'll just say results.append the current character, which will really be the digit that we're on. So now once we've actually terminated this loop, all we have to do is return our result as a string. And so now to quickly talk about the runtime and space complexity of our algorithm before submitting our code, what are we really doing? Well, we're going to run through all the characters in our address, right? So that will give us an O of N runtime where N is the number of characters in our IPv4 address. Uh, I don't know too much about IP addresses, but you could probably even argue that IP addresses are only a certain number of characters ever, right? So you could probably almost say that that's going to be a constant runtime because we know that the IP address will never be longer than a certain length. So we could probably even say that that's constant in terms of runtime. So now for space complexity, what we're also doing is just building a new string, right? We're building a string that's going to eventually hold n characters, right? Where n is the number of characters that we had in our original address, plus a few more characters to make sure that we're including each of those periods in square brackets. Um, and again, just because IP addresses are, you know, assumingly only a certain length, we could probably argue that the space complexity is also constant. But if you wanted to say, I feel like it'd probably be fine to just say that the memory complexity is O of n. So I feel like you can argue either way, the runtime and space complexity both being O of n, or n is the number of characters in your address, or being constant because it sounds like IP addresses are only ever going to be a certain length uh, to begin with, or within a certain range at the very least. So now let's run this code 
Let's make sure that works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve defanging an IP address in Java. Again, this question is being asked by Apple right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and are new to the channel, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe below. I'll see you guys in the next one.